Galileo Galilei, Italian natural philosopher, astronomer, and mathematician who made fundamental contributions to the sciences of motion, astronomy, and strength of materials and to the development of the scientific method. His incalculable achievements have made him to be one of the celebrated physicists, and they have allowed scientists today to work off of his discoveries. Galileo's research was based on modern philosophies of science, and he believed that the universe should be described by mathematics. The first of seven children, Galileo was born on February 15, 1564 in Pisa, Italy. His father, Vincenzo Galilei, was a cloth merchant and respected musician who wrote several treatises on musical theory. Though a noble family of the Republic of Florence, the Galilei had lost much of their wealth over the years. In fact, Galileo was born in Pisa because his father had to move his textile trade out of Florence for financial reasons. When Galileo was 10, his family moved back to Florence, where his early education was overseen by his father and a private tutor. As part of his education, the young Galileo also spent some time at the monastery of Santa Maria di Vallombrosa. Adhering to his father's wish that he gain a university education, Galileo enrolled as a medical student at the University of Pisa in 1581. Very quickly, however, he realized his preference for mathematics over medicine, and only a year after beginning his university studies, he made the first of his discoveries on the laws of motion by observing a chandelier in the Pisa Cathedral. In 1586, having convinced his father to let him abandon his medical studies, Galileo withdrew from the University of Pisa without a degree and returned home to his family. In Florence, Galileo continued his mathematical, literary, and scientific studies on an independent basis. He delivered a series of public lectures on the Divine Comedy at the Florentine Academy. In need of a permanent position in 1589, Galileo used the influence of his friends to secure an appointment as a mathematics lecturer at the University of Pisa. Only three years later, Galileo once again sought the favor of his friends and arranged a more prestigious appointment to the chair of mathematics at the University of Padua. At Padua, Galileo quickly gained the reputation as an excellent teacher with a quick wit and keen sense of humor. In 1597, he applied his knowledge by constructing a military compass for aid in artillery raids and army formations. Although this invention gained him a great deal of professional and monetary compensation, it was his work in astronomy and the study of motion that brought on his more enduring fame as a scientist. The debate that spawned Galileo's most momentous discoveries came in 1604, when a new star appeared in the sky. According to the astronomical theory of the Timio based on the work of the ancient philosophers Aristotle and Ptolemy Earth was stationary and at the center of the universe, with the planets, sun, and stars revolving around it. This universe was seen as a perfect order created by God, thus, when the new star appeared, the question arose as to how something new could arise from something already perfect in design. The answer came from the work of Copernicus, the 16th century Polish astronomer who claimed that Earth and other planets orbited the Sun, while the stars were fixed in the sky. Galileo found Copernicus' theory tenable, but he lacked the necessary device to test it. This dilemma was ended in 1609, when on a visit to Venice, he learned of a new eyeglass used to see things very distant. With this as his inspiration, Galileo returned to Padua to design and build what is now known as the telescope. With his new device, Galileo discovered many new things. That the moon was not smooth, but had many craters and mountains. That Jupiter had four moons, thus disproving the theory that only Earth was orbited by a natural satellite, and that the phases of Venus could not be explained correctly within the traditional Earth-centered model of the universe. Galileo published these findings in 1610 in his work Sidereus Nuncius, the Sidereal Messenger, wherein he explicated his support of the Copernican heliocentric model. The work brought Galileo international fame, as well as a professorship for life at the University of Padua. However, 
Instead of accepting the university's offer, he returns to Florence to become the Grand Duke's primary philosopher and mathematician. A year after returning to Florence, Galileo made a visit to Rome, where he lectured, demonstrated his telescope, and debated a variety of scientific and mathematical issues. Though graciously received by both the Pope and Papal Court, growing opposition to Galileo and his theories was mounting. Many theologians scorned the heliocentric theory of Copernicus because it conflicted with the Bible and church doctrines concerning the role of Earth in God's created order. These critics now turned their attention to Galileo, who was soon warned that he ought to teach and discuss the heliocentric theory as only speculative. Then, in 1615, Copernicus' book A Revolution of Asorbium Celestium, The Revolutions of the Heavenly Bodies, was placed on the Catholic Church's list of banned books. In response, Galileo ceased to comment publicly for several years on anything astronomical. In 1618, however, three comets appeared in the sky, prompting a Jesuit astronomer to proclaim their appearance as proof that Copernicus' heliocentric theory was wrong. In light of this development, Galileo could keep silent no longer. He therefore published Sagittor, the Assayer, in which he defended Copernicus and presented his own arguments on the need for free scientific exploration. Following this daring move, in 1632, Galileo published his most controversial book, Dialogue Concerning the Two Chief World Systems, Ptolemaic and Copernican. Although he received the Catholic Church's approval for publication, the book was placed on its banned books list shortly after its publication. Not surprisingly, the book also caused the office of the Inquisition to summon Galileo to stand trial for heresy. The main question at hand was whether he had defied the Pope, who had made it against the faith, to hold, defend, and teach the Copernican doctrine. After a five-month trial, Galileo was convicted for holding and believing false doctrine, contrary to the holy and divine scriptures. His punishment was prohibition of his book dialogue and a prison sentence. Given the alternative option of recanting his scientific positions, however, Galileo accepted, swearing, I will never again say or assert anything that might furnish occasion for a further suspicion. Galileo spent the rest of his life under house arrest, first in the village of Siena and later in Arstory. Restricted from taking any trips or entertaining more than a few guests, he lived a somewhat lonely life. His situation worsened in 1634, when his favorite daughter died. Then in 1637, Galileo went blind. Despite his declining health and the church's attempts to diminish his stature, however, Galileo's fame grew. Toward the end of his life, he was visited by such prestigious intellectual figures as Thomas Hobbes and John Milton. Galileo lived the last few years of his life in relative isolation and died on January 8, 1642 in Arstory, Italy. Galileo is acknowledged as the father of modern physics. Many of today's scientists base their researches off of his works. The spacecraft launched by NASA in October 18, 1989 was named in Galileo's honor as the spacecraft's mission was around Jupiter, a planet Galileo carefully studied with his telescope. In addition, the Copernican theory would never have developed into the 21st century if not for Galileo's persevering effort to prove validity in it by observing the phases of Venus relative to the Sun from the Earth through his experiments of the pendulum as well as for other objects' motions, Galileo completely revolutionized the scientific method. He ushered in the modern scientific age from the Aristotelian age of science. Galileo was the first physicist to actually experiment by hand and to relate science to experiments in mathematics which led to the Galilean-Newtonian paradigm. This revolution in which Galileo brought to the world of science has affected every scientist today as they now approach their field of study in an experimental way using the scientific method. Galileo's discoveries in motion influenced Sir Isaac Newton as he theorized his law of motions which is the basis for predicting situations in engineering as well as predicting the movements of celestial bodies.